here we go. So, oh, come on. First one, a pen available in four colors, red, black, blue, and green, three different writing tips, fine, medium, and so on. Two types of ink. How many different pens there are? So this is a simple counting one. So we're going to count, we're going to do pens times tips times ink. So there's four pens times three different tips times two types of ink. And that's going to equal uh, 24. Okay, so it's a simple counting choice with this one. Okay. Next is <clears throat> so use it just 2, 3, 6, 8, and 9. 2, 3, 6, 8, and 9. How many three digit numbers can it make? So here's my three digits. So how many options do I have to go in the first part? I have five since there's five numbers. So I can take away this one. How many options do I have now? I have four options. And then I take away this one, for example. Then I have three options left. And they're all gonna be multiplied together that equals 60. Okay, I can put 2 and 3 back. Now for B, it has to be an even number. So this number here has to be an even number. And the even numbers are 6, 8, and 2. So the 2, 6, and 8 can go there. So I have three options to go in that last digit spot. Okay, so let's go, for example, let's say we take the two. Therefore, how many spots, will, how many options do I have left for here? I have four, and then I get rid of another one. I would have three options left. So that equals 36. Okay, two and three. So now, Our next one is a little more difficult. So three digit numbers greater than 350. Okay. We kind of have two spots to go with here. Okay. We have two options. We have the option where you put a three here. Okay, three in the first number here. Actually, so let's start with the other option first. So we sell these. Okay. We could pick a number that's automatically going to be over 350. We can put a 6, 8, or 9 in this first slot. That's automatically going to be over 350. So it's going to be 600, 800, or 900. So there's three options what to go there. The 6, the 8, and the 9. Now let's say we took the 9 out. Then how many options would we have for the next one? We would have four. Then we take another one out. Again. My eraser is not liking me. And we'd have three options again. Okay, so that would be 36 options there. The other option is if we put three there. Because we could have a number bigger than 350. So we could start with a 300, but now the key aspect is what number must go there to be bigger than 350? Well, it has to be a 6, 8, or 9, since I can't put a 2 or 3 there because it would be 320 or 330. So we have three options there. Oops, there's not three options. There's only one option there. Sorry. One option since it's only putting a 3 there. And then at the very last option, so we've got rid of this one, and uh, and then we, let's say we use this one. We now have three numbers left that can go there. So that would be nine. Now if we add these two up, we've got 45 options all together. Okay. <clears throat> So 
So the next one is a postal code consists of letters and digits. So I like to do this first. Let's do A. Postal codes are going to look like this. Letter, number, letter, number, letter, number. Okay. The letters D, F, I, O, and Q and U are never used. So never used are six letters. Okay. And W and Z and two letters uh, are not first. Okay. Um, and postal code uh, repetitions are allowed. Okay. So for the first option here, we have 26 letters in the alphabet. We have to minus off the six letters that are not used and minus off the two that are not used first, which leaves us 18 options for letters to start. Now numbers, we have 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and 9. So that means we have 10 numbers we can use. So 10 can go there. Now it does say repetition is allowed. Now for the second part, we can now go 26 just minus the 6. Because these two can be used now, which equals 20. So we go 20, and we have 10 letters that can be used, 10 numbers that can be used, 20 letters, and 10 numbers. And we multiply all those together. And that equals 7,200,000, like such. Now, B says, suppose the post office removed restrictions on all letters. How many extra postcodes would be available? Okay. So same pattern. Letter here, letter here. Number. Oops. Number, letter, number. Okay. Now, if we had no restrictions, this would be 26, 10, 26, 10, 26, 10. We're going to multiply all those together. Which is going to equal an enormous number of 17,567,000. And uh, how many how many extra? If we take the 17 million minus the 7 million, and that would give us R. So you can take this number here and minus off this number here, which give us 10 million 376 comma zero zero zero. One second, I gotta put the game on my other computer so I can watch what the college basketball score is as I do this. Twenty fourteen minutes. Okay. An automatic teller machine requires a four-digit personal identification number. The first digit can be zero. Uh, in each case, how many pins would be available? Okay. So, if repetition is allowed, we have a four-digit number here. I'd have ten options for the first number, ten options for the second number, ten options for the third, and so on. So that would equal 10,000 different passwords I could use. If repetitions are not allowed, I should be really changing colors here. Is my color came yet? Right. For B, repetition is not allowed. Still four digits. Now we have ten options for the first one. But once we use one of the numbers, we'd be down to nine, we'd be down to eight, and down to seven options. So 5,040 options altogether. Okay. 
So, Alice, Bob, and Kara having dinner at a restaurant. There are five dinner specials available. Specials one and two are vegetarian. One and five contain nuts. And each person orders a dinner special. Okay. How many different ways can they order dinner? Okay. Where's the dinner special? Okay. So for A, how many different ways could you? So A for Alice, B for Bob, and C for Care. Now one thing it doesn't say is if it has a chance for um, repetition, but it does. So now, Alice could order any of five of the dinner specials, Bob could order any five, and so could Carol. So that's going to equal 125 different ways to order those specials. Okay. So now we have a little thing different here. We still have Alice, Bob, and Carol. Um, so they have some dietary restrictions. Bob is a vegetarian and Carol's allergic to nuts. So Alice still has five options. Bob is a vegetarian. There's only two vegetarian dishes on the platter. So those is going to be, she has, uh, Bob has two options. Carol is allergic to nuts. One in five contain nuts. So if one in five contain nuts, that's only two of them. So that means there's three that do not. Therefore, there could be 30 different ways they can order. Number six here, how many arrangements are the letters uh, number, how many arrangements begins with N and ends with R? So how many numbers are there? One, two, three, four, five, six. There are six different options here. Okay. So how many number arrangements can I make if I have six? Two, three, four, five, six. Well, I would have six options for the first num letter. Five, then four, then three, then two, then one. You could also write this as six factorial, or you could write it as six P six. If you multiply all those together, it's 720. Now, how many ranges begin with N and end with R. Okay. One, two, three, four, five, six. So N has to go here. So I only have one option with N. R has to go here. I only have one R. So I've taken this out. I've taken this out. Now, how many options do I have left? One, two, three, four. So I have four options, three options, two options, and one option. Because after I use after I use this one, I would hypothetically get rid of one, then I have three more letters I could use. And that is twenty-four options for arrangements if N has to be first. R has to be second. So what I like to do is I place those numbers, then I figure out what else I have. Place those letters, sorry. So, let's wait for my pen to switch. There are nine horses in a race. How many possible uh, possibilities are there for win, place, and show? For people for the first three places. Okay. So we have nine horses all together. But we only have win, place, and show. So if we think about it, how many options do we have to win the race? Well, we have nine options we have to win the race. 
then after our horse wins, how many options do we have to play second? First, second, third. We have eight options. And then we have three options. Now another way to, e to think about this is, first of all, order matters. So we're using permutations. How many options do we have? We have nine options. Then, how many do we want? How many places do we want? We want three. And both of those are going to equal... Oh, where's my calculator? 9P3. 504 options altogether. So in a race with nine horses, there are 504 different ways they can place first, second, and third. And I swear I muted that. <clears throat> okay. There are seven empty seats on a bus and four people come on board. How many ways can they be seated? So in this case, how many ways? Ways right there refers to order. If I would have said how many combinations can be seated or something like that, that is, that would be, that would not be order, that would be combinations. That would be place doesn't matter. So this one place does matter. So we can kind of think about it the same way. Um, all right, we have seven different, seven empty seats. And four people come on board. So we have seven empty seats and four come on board. So we have seven options. We're going to fill four of them. So 840. Now that's a kind of an odd one to think about because you're going to have empty seats in there and you're kind of moving around who's empty. All right. So a sports club has 30 members and wishes to pick a president, vice president, and secretary, and treasurer. Assume that no person will hold two offices. How many different ways can the, the selections be made? Now, since they're not a committee, but there's roles, order matters. So we know it's P. So how many options do we have? We have 30 options. And how many positions are there? There are four positions. So it's going to be 30 P4, which equals 657 comma 720. Because there's an order, because there's positions, order matters. Um, is that the same question twice? Yep. Question 11. Did I copy and paste that wrong? One second. I must have done that wrong from my computer. I'm missing 10. Right. <coughs> Give me one second here. Delete that and paste that. And this should change in my computer any second. Yeah, the question disappeared. I'm going to hop around and do 11 ahead of time. <clears throat> How many different four-letter arrangements can be formed with the word problem? So arrangements means order. So A, how many different arrangements? Well, if we think about it, four letters. How many letters is there? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There's eight letters all together. 
So order matters. We have eight options. And we want four of them. So it should be 8P4. Uh, where's my answer here? Where are my answers? 9, 10. No. Alright, so let's do this here. AP4 is going to be 600, 1640. So now, of our eight letters, we have two vowels. So we have two vowels and six consonants. Okay. So now, if we think about B here, how many arrangements do not contain any vowels? So if I think about it, I have six consonants. Oops. Six consonants. Let me erase this. My little laptop computer is working its hard out here. There we go. So six P four times I have two vowels, two P zero. Okay. So six P four times 2p0 is going to be 360 possible orders. Now, how many arrangements contain the letter M? So wait for my blue pen to come up. Come on, blue pen. There we go. So, the way I think about this contains the letter M. So let's make a group of one letter M and seven other letters. So I'm going to pick my letter M, so 1P1 times, and I have seven other letters, 7P, and I need three letters to make my four. So 7, that's going to be 210 different combinations. And then let's go with blue. How many arrangements contain B and L together in that order? Okay, uh, in the order BL. Okay, so I can think about this in a couple of different ways. I could think about it as in one, two, three, four. I want B and L together. So I'm just going to stick them here. Right? They could go anywhere along those lines, but I don't think it uh, does it. Hmm. I think it does matter here. So I could put the BL there and there, which would be 1 and 1. So we have 1B, one 1L, one and 6 other ones. So if we have those there, we have 6 different options here and 4 different options there. But then we could also order it like this, where B and L are here. That would be 1, 1. Why is that a 4? That should be a 5. A 5 there. And if we did this, this would be 6 and 5 here. Or, I could put B and L here. It would be 1 and 1, and then 6 and 5 here. So that's going to be 30, 30, and 30, and that should all add up to 90 altogether, if I'm not mistaken. Because we could have the two letters first, middle, or last. I forgot to do let's go back up to 10 all right all 
Okay, that's not me. <clears throat> how many different ways, uh, how many ways can math books, oh my gosh, I cut that too short. Five math, then we have three, what's the, uh, oh, hold the guy a little computer. Oh, there we go. It's now better. Okay. Science books we arrange the same subject. So we have five math, three history, and two different science books be arranged on the shelf. Of the same uh, and books of the shelf and the same subject are kept together. Okay, so this is kind of a two-parter. First, we have to arrange the math, history, and science. So if we're going to arrange those together, right? Order matters of which way it's going. It's going to be three options for the first slot. If we look at a big bookshelf, right? First slot, first slot, second slot, third slot. Right? We're going to have three options to put in that first slot. Then we're going to have two options and one option, which is essentially three factorial. So let's say we have math, then science, then history. Okay, that's our options. That's how the first option we go with. Okay. Now it could be an, any one of those six different options that could be of order, but I'm just going to show you this one. Okay, now within that math, we have five books and they could go in any order. So we can start with five here, then four, then three, then two, then one. And that's the same as saying five factorial. So we're going to multiply this by five factorial. Now the science, they have two different books. They have two books. So we could go two and then one, which would be two factorial. Then finally, history has three books, which would be three, two, one, or three factorial. And then we're going to multiply all those together. So three factorial times two factorial times three factorial and five factorial. So five factorial times is eight thousand. Where is my book here? Yeah, 8,640 total options. Okay. Well, hopefully that helps people out. If you had difficulty with it, let me just make sure I got all the stuff in there. 11 questions, yeah. Okay, hopefully that helps you out and have a good day.